Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Thalassemia. This is an inherited blood disorder due to reduced hemoglobin synthesis. Now, by now we all know what exactly is hemoglobin and what does it do. So as far as the structure of hemoglobin is concerned, hemoglobin is a protein molecule. It is a tetramer with four polypeptide chains where it has two alpha chains and two beta chains and attached to each of these alpha and beta chains is an iron containing molecule called heme. And this iron containing molecule is primarily responsible for transportation of oxygen to different parts of the blood body because we see that the, the one function of blood is to transport oxygen to different parts of the body. So basically which component in blood does this? So that is basically done by hemoglobin. Okay, so now what goes wrong in thalassemia? Now what happens is sufficient amount of hemoglobin is not synthesized. So what will happen? Sufficient amount of oxygen will not get transmitted and it will not get, it will not reach different parts of the body. Now if different body parts do not receive enough oxygen, they will not be able to perform properly. So that's the entire problem of uh, thalassemia. Now, as a result of this reduced hemoglobin synthesis, it re results in excessive destruction of RBCs, therefore causing anemia. Now, when too much of red blood cells get destructed, what happens? There is a deficiency of red blood cells inside the body because of which the and that condition basically is called anemia. So, in fact, we have even spoken about another genetic disorder called sickle cell anemia. So, that was also a type of anemia where the red blood cells, they their shapes distorted and they became sickle shaped, sickle shaped. Now due to that change in shape of the red blood cells, they were not able to flow properly throughout the body. So they resulted in a lot of blood clots. Since they were not able to reach different parts of the body, therefore different organs got affected. So that was the problem in case of sickle cell anemia. So the entire problem was because of the distorted shape of the red blood cells. In this case, in thalassemia, the main problem is that the hemoglobin synthesis gets reduced. So less amount of hemoglobin is synthesized. So when that happens, so that means there is some abnormal hemoglobin synthesis. So something goes wrong with hemoglobin itself. So when that happens again, the transport of oxygen gets impacted. So this can, now thalassemia can be at a very uh, less severe level where it doesn't really impact the patient much. Whereas it could also be really severe and fatal for the patients. So there could be many different forms of thalassemia. So there are three major forms of thalassemia, alpha thalassemia, beta thalassemia and thalassemia minor. So let us start with minor thalassemia because this is the least severe form of thalassemia. So sometimes if, if a patient is suffering from thalassemia minor, sometimes the person doesn't show any symptom at all. Even if there are symptoms, the symptoms are just like minor anemia, like lack of uh, sufficient blood inside your body. So just minor anemia symptoms for which you really do not need any special medical treatments or blood transfusions or transplants. So nothing like that is needed. So that's thalassemia minor. Now, if you talk in terms of the structure of the hemoglobin molecule, so just now I was telling that the hemoglobin molecule has alpha chains as well as beta chains. So in thalassemia, if a person is suffering from thalassemia minor, that means that there is only one affected beta gene. So there is just one, there is some issue with only one beta gene. So rest of the alpha chains or rest of the beta chains are perfectly fine. There is just problem with one affected beta gene. So that's thalassemia minor. The next level is beta thalassemia. So in beta thalassemia, again, this is a more severe form than thalassemia minor and it is also the most common form. So in beta thalassemia, again, it, this can be of two types. One could be thalassemia major. The other could be thalassemia intermedia. So as the name suggests, thalassemia intermedia is more severe than thalassemia minor and thalassemia major is more severe than thalassemia intermedia. So in thalassemia intermedia, there is less, it is a less severe form and therefore it doesn't need blood transfusions again. 
but when it comes to thalassemia major here a lot of organs get enlarged uh, there is a paleness in the body poor appetite jaundice all of these are symptoms of thalassemia major and thales in order to cure thalassemia major uh, often blood transfusions are needed so whenever you the moment you talk about blood transfusions it is definitely not a very simple thing or a small thing so it, it becomes a major uh, problem in that way so thalassemia major is like a more severe form of beta thalassemia now again if we talk in terms of structure of the hemoglobin so when both the beta chain, beta genes are affected then a person suffers from beta thalassemia that is why the name beta thalassemia because when you look at the structure of hemoglobin you would see that it is a tetramer tetra means four because it has four polypeptide chains two alpha chains and two beta chains so only when only one beta gene is affected that is thalassemia minor when both the beta chains get affected that is beta thalassemia and when the alpha chain also gets affected that is alpha thalassemia so as more genes get affected the more severe is the form of thalassemia because we have beta chains alpha chains only one beta gene it is thalassemia minor more beta genes beta thalassemia along with beta genes if you have the alpha genes also getting affected that is alpha thalassemia so more number of genes getting affected more severe would be the form of thalassemia so in alpha thalassemia is sub considered to be the most severe form of thalassemia so alpha thalassemia also can be of two types one is the hemoglobin so one type is hemoglobin h disease and the second type is hydrops fetalis so when you talk about the hemoglobin h disease this cause bone issues it can cause jaundice or enlarged spin so in in severe forms of thalassemia there is always there are always chances of having more more frequent jaundice or enlarged organs so these are some of the common impacts of severe form of thalassemia in case of hydrops fetalis fetalis because fetalis is derived from the word fetus so this disease hydrops fetalis occurs even before a child is born so in in these kind of diseases the babies are either stillborn or they die shortly after birth so hydrops fetalis is a disease is a form of thalassemia which happens in kids even before they are born so either either they are born dead or they die immediately after birth so these are the various types of thalassemia so you see that the severity increases as more and more uh, genes or more and more chains inside the hemoglobin structure gets affected now let us try to understand the genetics of thalassemia so by now we understood that the cause of thalassemia is abnormality in one of the genes involved in the production of hemoglobin so that's the main cause of thalassemia now let's try to understand the inheritance pattern so thalassemia follows autosomal recessive inheritance so in one of the previous videos i have spoken about the different types of mendelian disorders where i had spoken about autosomal recessive inheritance also so if you have understood that very clearly in that case i do not need to explain about the genetics of thalassemia because you will be able to do it on your own okay anyways let us quickly have a look at the scenario where one parent is carrier parent so one parent is a carrier the other parent is unaffected now the moment we say it is autosomal recessive autosomal means the uh, the genetics or the transfer of uh, the abnormal gene will happen through the autosomes so it is independent of the gender recessive means a person will get affected with thalassemia only if both the genes or both the alleles are the defective ones only then the person will have thalassemia so what would be the three conditions so since it is a recessive condition so a person will get affected only if the person has both the defective genes that is one copy of this gene has to come from the mother one copy has to come from the father and defective gene has to come from both mother and father only then the person will be affected the second scenario could be the person will be a carrier but not affected 
that means the one allele is capital R the other one is small r so from one parent you get defective gene from other parent you get normal gene in that case you would be just be a carrier but you will not be suffering from thalassemia sometimes now in this situation you might be suffering from thalassemia minor as I mentioned last in the last slide thalassemia minor means no symptoms or very minimal symptoms so that is thalassemia minor when you are a carrier of a gene and when I say affected that means you would be suffering from beta or alpha thalassemia which are the more severe forms of thalassemia and if you are an unaffected individual unaffected individual means you would have capital R capital R that is you will not have any defective gene at all. So that is how we say that this is these are the three possible scenarios and this shows that it is a recessive condition only if both copies of the gene is misprinted or both copies are defective only then the disease occurs in a person. So let us look at this case one where only one of the parents is carrier there are chances that the child might be a carrier but no chance of severe forms for example in this case the father is a carrier so capital R small r mother is unaffected so capital R capital R so these are the various possibilities of which these two would be normal because they do not even carry a defective gene the rest of the two children they carry a defective gene but then again they are also not affected they they are just carrier of the defective gene so they might be suffering from thalassemia minor so they might show some minor symptoms or no symptoms at all but they will definitely not suffer from alpha or beta thalassemia. Now let's look at the second scenario where both the parents are carrier. So if both the parents are carrier of the defective gene then there are chances of getting a severe form is more in their children. So here if you see the father is capital R small r, mother is also capital R small r. So when you look at the children, one of them would be normal, two of them would be carrier. That is they might suffer from uh, thalassemia minor, but one of them might get impacted with a severe form of thalassemia, alpha or beta thalassemia. So there is a 25% chance that one of their child might suffer from a severe form of thalassemia. And there is a 50% of chance that the child might have, might be a carrier or might suffer from thalassemia minor. And there is again a 25% chance that the child would be absolutely normal. So this is the scenario when both the parents are carrier. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.